Hello, welcome to today's lecture. And for today, we're looking at section E of Farm Model 1. And the topic is pharmacy layout. My name is Farm Mark McQueen from Flexing South College. Introduction. The Farmers Council registered five kinds of pharmacies in Ghana. And this is important because once we have a pharmacy, depending on our operation, it's going to show the type of layout we use so a retail pharmacy layout is different from a wholesale pharmacy layout and a wholesale pharmacy layout is different from a retail wholesale pharmacy layout and as the presentation continues we are going to know the types of layouts they have pharmacies are permitted to supply all classes of medicines that is class a b and c now because of that the layout of a pharmacy should make it possible for medicines like class A should be kept under a key and a lock, okay, where it's only the pharmacist that should have access to class A and B medicines. The medicine counter assistants normally should not have access to these medicines, unless, of course, class C medicines, all right. So class A medicines are medicines that a patient will need a prescription from a doctor before they can get. Class B medicines are medicines that if the pharmacist is on duty, will be able to sell, all right. And they can be dispensed without a prescription. For any prospective pharmacy to open, especially a retail pharmacy, the first and most important thing you have to know that this pharmacy is 400 meters by radius, okay, away from the nearest pharmacy, or as determined by pharmacy. So means that that's why we don't see pharmacies closer. So when you meet a pharmacy, the next time you see another one, normally should be 400 meters. The structure should also be geographically and structurally permanent. Now, what this means is that we should not be able to move the pharmacy. All right. So normally, uh, it can't be in a container. It shouldn't be movable. All right. And the structure should be made of brick and mortar. You cannot use plywood or concrete, sorry, plywood or a container for it. It should have adequate ventilation and lighting. It should be wall painted, polished shelves available, counters and walls, with washable floors, okay, so like towel or terrazzo. You should have appropriate storage facilities for all products available. So if the product will need a refrigerator, okay, the farmer should have it where we keep the products in the refrigerator. A wall written signboard bearing the pharmacy's name should have toilet facilities and also relevant equipment and reference books should also be made available. At the pharmacy. Now, the floor space for a retail should be 36 square meter. Okay, when you say 36 square meter, normally you multiply the length times the breadth. Okay, so basically, if the length is 6 meters and the breadth is 6 meters, we have gotten 36 square meter. All right, and should have a ceiling height of 3.2 meters. 3.2 meters that's the distance from the floor to the ceiling should be 3.2 meters, and this one is supposed to ensure that the shop is well ventilated okay and the shop floor space should include uh, the main shop dispensary and an office all right so they are all part of the 36 square meter the farmer should also have a portable water a zinc and a working surface area for extemporaneous preparations okay and i've said extemporaneous preparations are medicines that are not available on the shelf okay nobody manufactures this so when the patient comes, we prepare it at the pharmacy and we give it to the patient. Normally with a very short expiry date or we call it shelf life, about a week or two. Medicines that we repair for the patient at the pharmacy are called extemporaneous preparations. All right. The retail pharmacy should also have a patient counseling unit. And this patient counseling unit is supposed to be an area that allows for privacy, okay? Where the patient can sit and talk freely to the pharmacist without them watching over their shoulders to see whether somebody is ear dropping or looking at them okay and we should also have some reference book and some test kits that are like malaria test kit blood pressure uh, machines uh, glucometer for checking blood sugars they are all normally kept at the patient counseling unit so this is an example of a retail pharmacy at one of our pharmacies at achimota Okay, it's well stocked. You can see the way it is designed. Okay, so there are offices in the right hand side. You can see there are two offices. It has gotten a toilet facility, 
it has gotten a dispensary we have gotten a portable sink all right so basically that's how a retail pharmacy should look like then the wholesale pharmacy is important now one thing let's go back to the retail shop when it comes to the retail pharmacy we sell only to end users of the medicine people who are sick when they come these are the people we sell to retail farmers cannot sell in bulk we cannot sell one carton of a medicine it's against the law all right so we sell to people who are sick who need the medicine to go and take or consume all right when it comes to the wholesale pharmacy they sell medicines on bulk okay they sell to other business they don't sell to the patients it's, it's, it's against the law for them to sell to patients they sell to pharmacies and they sell to chemical shop their floor space should be 36 meters squared also with the same ceiling height of 3.2 you should at least have four rooms one for reception one for a storeroom an office and the last one for an accounts or cashier's office okay obviously the reception should have chairs for the clients to sit and a showcase to show all the medicines that they are selling there okay at the reception there should not be a standard shelf of the medicines okay they should be a standard shelf that's for the performance council now the storeroom must also be well ventilated and shelves or pallets must also be provided okay so in the storeroom the place should be well ventilated so that the medicines don't go bad there should also be a signboard that will state boldly or conspicuously wholesale only so that everybody is aware that they only do a wholesale they don't sell to the end user okay you cannot go and buy price time one blister it's not done all right the Fumas Council list of retailers and food and drugs board list of manufacturers should also be available at the wholesale pharmacy. Then we have the third one we call the wholesale retail pharmacy. For the wholesale retail pharmacy, it's not allowed in a metropolitan area like in Accra, Metropolis is not allowed, Kumasi Metropolis is not allowed, Takra Day is not allowed. Okay, it's only allowed in a municipal. If you're in a municipal assembly or so, okay, it's allowed. The retail wholesale pharmacy should have a minimum of 48 square meter. Okay, so please know the difference. The retail shop is 36. The wholesale shop was 36 square meters. But when we are combining a wholesale retail shop, it should be 48. So this one of our shop at Israel, we can see it's a wholesale and a retail facility. We do both wholesaling and both retail selling. All right. So that's a wholesale and retail shop for you. Now, when it comes to the over-the-counter medicine sellers lances, this lances normally is given for people who want to only sell class C medicines. They are normally not a pharmacist. You don't need the pharmacist to be there. And that is how the pharmacy, the chemical sellers lances is. Okay, so they engage in retail supply of only over-the-counter medicines at a specified as specified the location on their lances okay their business also limited one the lances shall be used only by the lance c only which means that when somebody is having a chemical shop basically or over the counter medicines sellers lances they can't sell it to you if you buy it it's against the offense all right the location that the finance council have given you assuming your shops are supposed to be at achimota you can only operate from achimota you cannot go and open a branch at Kwabinya or so. No, it's only one, and that's where you're supposed to operate. Only over-the-counter medicines are permitted to be stopped. You cannot sell prescription medicines like antibiotics, okay, amoxicillin, uh, flagell, tupaye, and all those medicines. They are not so there. You can sell medicines for hypertension, medicines for diabetes, but they are all prescription medicines. What you can sell is the over-the-counter medicines like cough measures cold medicines vitamins blood tonic some type of skin ointment so okay, those simple things are allowed to be sold the supply of the over-the-counter medicines should also be by retail you cannot sell in bulk okay so let's just chemical sellers always sell on retail to other customers all right so this is for the if you want to open it also the person to open a chemical shop should be a Ghanaian. If you are not a Ghanaian, you cannot open. You should have a good character, medically and mentally fit. You should at least have finished SS or GCO level. Okay. If you finish the MCA program, it is a plus. Normally, you don't have difficulty in acquiring a last chemical shop. Okay. 
you should also be a recognized prescriber, assuming you're a nurse or a medical doctor or a physician assistant, it's legal for you to get a license because by law you shouldn't be a qualified recognized sorry prescriber. And the last one, you should not be in active employment. If you are employed, let's say you're a teacher, you work in a bank, you work for somebody, okay, normally do not give you the lances. All right. So the lances normally are given to people who are casuals. They are not actively employed. It's easy for them to get the lances. Now the site where you put the chemical shop to is very important. Okay. First of all, if the place is already fully um, equipped by other chemical shops, okay, fully the whole area that you are, the place there, there are a lot of chemical shops there. They will not allow you to open. All right. So normally when you open a chemical shop, please look for places where there are not much. Okay, if there's a chemical shop, at least it should be about one kilometer away from where you want to open it. The same applies if there's a pharmacy. Go one kilometer. Now, mind you, if it's a, if a pharmacy is coming to open close to a chemical shop, the law reduces the distance by 400 meters. But if a chemical shop is going to open in a place where there's already a pharmacy or a chemical shop, you are going one kilometer. That's a big difference. Now, in villages and rural areas, other factors like population may also be considered. All right. But the village is not big. They do not allow a lot of chemical shops to be there. The site must also be accessible to the community. Okay. They should be able to come there easily. It should not be at the outskirts where people will struggle to come there. And the premise should be within, if within a story building, should preferably be on the ground floor. All right. Don't put to be climbing to the first floor, second floor to come and buy medicines. Okay. And the applicant shall not be required. And here, the word is you shall not be required. So assuming you just get a shop and you let the landlord know you want to open it for a chemical shop, you don't have to do anything in the shop. You have to come and pick a form from the Fumas Council. After picking the form, you apply. Then Fumas Council come and inspect it. If the facility is okay, then you can be able to um, um, equip and furnish the shop. All right. There are some times that Fumas Council will come and say the shop is not appropriate. If you have given your money to the land, it will be very hot. All right. So applicants shall not be required to develop it until the application is approved by the pharmacy council. The layout is simple. One, for chemical shops, you should be geographically and structurally permanent. You should not be able to move it. You cannot use um, wood, the structure or container. No, for it is not allowed. The minimum floor space is 12 meters squared. Please take note. The retail shop was 36 meters square. The wholesale was 36 meters square. Wholesale retail was 48 meters square. All right. And the chemical shop 12 square meter or meter squared. And it has gotten a ceiling height of 3.0 meters. Okay. For pharmacies, it should be 3.2 meters. The floor should be covered with washable material. Okay. In the pharmacy, it was washable floor. In the chemical shop, you rather use washable material. An example is simple rubber carpet okay you can just lay the shop with the rubber carpet and that's okay you should have adequate ventilation like ceiling fans or fans and lighting there should also not be doors some people will go and rent a chamber and hall especially those by the main road and they are using the chamber to sleep and the hall is their, their chemical shop please it's not allowed all right so whatever premises you are using for your shop it should be for the shop you should not be sleeping inside the shop and the last one, the premise shall have a wall written signboard, like what I'm showing. It should have the name. So you can see JK Dankwa. It should have the name of the license holder to the designation. And here it is over the counter medicines practitioner lances. Okay. And the last one is the location of the shop. So you can see location is plot one, block A, Apimso, and Dunkumase. All right. So basically, for a chemical shop, these are some of the things that you should know about a chemical shop. I encourage as many of you that you have interest in starting business to pick the form and start now. Okay, even though you are in the school, you can still pick the form and start. Okay, you can also wait. You finish, you work for some experience and start. It depends on you. All right, but chemical shops are allowed. So you can start some. Now, let's look at arrangement of items in the pharmacy. And this is very important for us to... So we'll be looking at arrangements of inventory and why should we arrange items in a pharmacy? Okay, once you have gotten the layout and the shelves, arrangement is also very important. Arrangement makes it easy for us to identify items. Okay, we don't waste time much 
it also brings order into the shop and builds upon the accuracy okay it limits the error it enhances efficiency okay we're able to serve at a very fast rate and normally once the efficiency is enhanced it improves upon the customer service they spend less time in our pharmacy all right so normally as an mc when you go to people's pharmacy when they're doing attachment when you start with any pharmacy you can see that we normally train a lot in arranging okay cleaning and arranging of the medicines and it's important you know how to do it now when we look at the methods of arrangement it is important that we understand that the pharmacy can use any of this method it depends on the type of shop but please any shop you work in ask them which method do they use all right the methods can be arranged alphabetically some can be arranged according to their order of therapeutic use or order of use some is dosage form and some frequency of use when you say alphabetically it means that if the medicine is started a then they will arrange in a followed by the b when you see it's arranged according to the order of therapeutic use it means that we look at what diseases the medicines are used to treat or manage or cure all right so if they are painkillers they are arranged in one section like what you can see from the effect you can see they, are, they they have arranged it normally according to the order of therapeutic use or order of use all right those are forms later we'll be talking more about it but some are liquids so if all liquids are arranged in one section medicines that come as capsules are arranged in one section medicine that comes as ointments are arranged in one section and the last one is the frequency of use how often do people buy the medicine medicines that are frequently bought are brought closer to where we stand medicine that once a while somebody come and ask and buy we can put it further away from where we stand on the top shelf okay now making a choice is very easy all right so the choice of an arrangement method is based normally on suitability the most suitable method to use will depend on the convenience how convenient is the method and how easy is it to find a medicine all right so some will wish the alphabet card because they think it's easier some will also go for the therapeutic use because once you mention price term or they know is that where painkillers are okay so it's important to note that the arrangement of medicines on a shelf is not strictly based on one method as i've said you may do your attachment in one shop and what they are doing you will be, be employed in another shop and they are doing something different okay as an mc you should be adaptable but at least know the various methods okay whichever one the shop is using you should be able to go along with it the choice of arrangement may overlap in many cases for example in a shop items may be arranged alphabetical order but frequently purchased items may be separated and grouped together on a shelf okay here arrangement is based on the frequency of use so sometimes we can arrange in the same pharmacy some items are arranged according to frequency of use some are arranged according to their order of use all right so where items are arranged based on dosage forms example tablets capsules etc they can further be grouped alphabetically okay and this is very important for us to understand sometimes we can use other arrangements um like color height and expiry date okay like medicines that are expiring uh, are brought forward so that we sell them off before they expire on us and the different colors can also be arranged red medicines or labels can be arranged together okay and in so doing the shop can have some level of beauty okay how do we apply what we just learned so for convenience and easy accessibility Items in the dispensary may be arranged alphabetically, okay, in the shop. The over-the-counter drugs OTC may also be arranged by order to use, okay, by order to use to allow easy substitution. All right, so assuming somebody is, you arrange all price down in one section and one one, a particular brand of price, and once not available, we can get another one. All right, so this is something very important for us to know. The next one we have is called the counter disposition and this refers to how drugs are arranged in the counter so we can see how the drugs have been arranged in the counter beautifully okay or showcase an example of such products are ear drops ointments eye drops and ointments nasal drops and sprays 
contraceptives and condoms blah blah and normally it should be done in a way that is also easy for you to see and the items here are arranged also according to a format that you will not mix the medicines up and uh, and 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 cause what you call dispensing errors all right thank you very much this is the end of the lecture very simple lecture and there's some questions i want you to answer and send it to my email markbuckwin4 at yahoo.com all right so please look at the questions state the types of pharmacies the pharmacy council grants licenses okay state the difference between a retail and a wholesale pharmacy see the difference between a license over the counter seller's shop and a retail pharmacy state the main sections of a retail pharmacy okay state the requirements for operating an otcm's shop if you want to open a chemical shop what are the requirements State the reasons why items should be arranged properly in the pharmacy. And the last one, you are stating the main methods used in arranging inventory in the pharmacy. Thank you very much. And please send your assignments to my email. As I've said, Wednesday, we are going to have a discussion. I'll open the platform for if you have questions, you can ask me. And possibly Friday, I'll do a video okay on some test on it and we'll find time and i'll show you how you'll be doing your other tests thank you very much and god bless you all bye bye